little louder.
considerations they had before them in trying to prioritize and bring forward um, what they felt was reasonable while at the same time um, meeting the needs of the town and the employees and the projects that they have going forward. And then also the budget committee for a considerable amount of time in deliberating over that proposal and presenting you with the budget you have to you today. Um, those budgets are the same, by the way. The budget committee brought forward um, the budget that the select board agreed to as well. So I just want to take a moment and um, bring your attention to the handouts which are available in the back of the hall. The green sheet is the balance of all the trust funds, um, held by the trustees of the trust funds. So a number of the capital items reference transfers from those funds. There are often questions about those balances. So that's on the green sheet. Um, the single page um, white sheet is the revenues. They are estimated revenues that we projected for last year. What we uh, reported to the Department of Revenue is revised um, revenues and the actual ones that we received um, through the end of last year, as well as the ones we're projecting for this year. And that's all relevant because those, um, those revenues offset the operating budget um, and separately underneath at the bottom of that, the um, transfers in from um, funds are considered revenues as well. So um, the expenses is one side of it, but how well you can support those expenses from the revenues is the other part of it. So um, I'll just leave that at that. The, the larger packet, of course, is the budget. Um, the presentation more or less follows the budget um, in order. So you can follow along. You'll notice that there is um, if you would admit, um, the, there's a beige, all of green column, which refers to the default budget. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the default budget, except to know how it is different from the operating budget. It is $67,000 less than what the proposed operating budget is, and it's $15,000 less than the budget we're currently operating in. Um, so this is a figure um, put together at the discretion of the select board in their interpretation of the law, which says that the default budget is always the previous year's budget, um, plus or minus one-time expenses and contractual obligations. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about, um, you can see where the where for each line of um, the budget, what they've appropriated, um, but I'm not going to spend any more time on it than that. Um, so, there, thank you. So, I thought I would present the budget in terms of the process that um, brought us to this day, which is that the department heads bring their proposals to the select board. The select board take all their proposals and um, try to prioritize and, you know, in the back of their mind, what is reasonable to present to the voters, how do you prioritize the wants and needs of each of the individual departments. So, um, by and large, the largest request um, was for um, an increase in salary and hours um, for um, the highway department, for administration, um, and then um, salary increases um, to be market adjustments rather than what might be a regular 2% increase. Um, so we're facing market pressures because we're located in the seacoast and we're we neighbor bigger communities and also Maine that has different funding sources. And so we have good people and our department heads are concerned about retention because we're noting that um, in a lot of cases our salaries are not reflective of the market for those positions. So the select board is taking measures to try to address that. Um, administration, um, my proposal the bookkeeper position is new. It's a 20-hour posi uh, position. It's also an administrative assistant position. So we have 20 more hours of work getting done um, through employment that was happening before. But we're still not matching the amount of time that was um, made available by previous select board members in their volunteer time because now we have a select board that works full time. And so we're still that position is new and we're evaluating that. My proposal
proposal to the select board was for an additional five hours for that position. Um, they have proposed two and a half years in this budget, uh, two and a half hours per week in this budget for your consideration. I also asked for a salary increase of myself of $5,000 for a total of $65,000 because this position too is new and we are working on evaluating the responsibilities of the job and um, moving um, more I have, I have more people reporting to me than initially, and also we are evaluating policies and procedures in a way to try to give me more responsibility and authority so that the select board can be more productive in having bigger vision for the town. I would say our biggest deficiency in administration at this point is that we're bogged down with daily items, which um, diminishes our ability to keep our eye on strategic planning and bigger picture ideas. And so that's what that all is about. Dental insurance has been proposed for a number of years. Um, each proposal is different. We need by law um, six of the eight full-time employees to sign on to it for anyone to have it. And so far those proposals have not gotten the needed people. So um, that was a request. The select board met it and they withdrew it because that was, um, we, we still don't have the numbers with the employees. So, outside of salaries, those are the primary or the largest dollar amount requests from department heads. I will also add, the highway department asked for um, an additional full-time person. We'll, we'll address that later. Um, but <coughs> video recording equipment for the cruisers and um, the, the cost of protective clothing for the, fire, for the fire department has increased and it's also aging, so um, an increase in that line as well. <coughs> the recreation director is a request of the recreation committee supported by the select board. There, there's great interest in this community in maintaining the recreation programming for the summer. Um, that is increasingly challenging because they don't have the policies and procedures that alleviate liability concerns. Um, they have procedural issues because you have what essentially is a volunteer-run department. Um, and, and if you can imagine, um, government with a volunteer-run department just creates so, some problems. So, so that would try, the, the idea of a rec director is to um, create a, a, a line of um, responsibility and reporting from the select board um, to the recreation committee and recreation program. So, those are the requests that they received in the context of things that they cannot control that are increasing in the budget. So, of the things that they cannot control, transfer station increases are enormous. The tipping fee rate increases every year and that was projected on top of that, the volume of waste we are disposing of has increased considerably. You'll see that in that line. Um, so, so that's sort of something that's compulsory that they're not going to be able to mitigate, um, at least financially in the first year, but it has brought to their attention that you know, maybe there are management things that we can do to alleviate that, so we'll get to that. Um, the insurance that we subscribe to um, has a 7.5% increase on the plan. You'll notice the budget line is going down considerably. We have a lot of open spots for the police department, and so we budgeted for those to be family plans, not knowing what we might get for, um, for those new employees. So the new budget line reflects the actual plans that people are on at the 7.5% increase of that rate. The other increase is that we're having four elections this year. So um, stipends for the town clerk and all the people who work those elections, as well as the amount of lunches and printing, and all those things are a function of how many elections. Um, the, when they're state and federal, we certainly have the help with regard to printing some of those expenses, but we certainly have our own too. So that's one of the um, increases. And then aside from, that really reflects what the increases are in the budget, aside from everything else is more or less <coughs> adjustments to reflect what we're actually spending in things like 
utility costs and contracted um, contracts. I would bring to your attention that there are names, some things that have um, changed with the structure of the budget since last year. Um, the change in planning staff, um, that, that is not a, um, a budgetary, that's not a financial impact, we move the money around. And you'll see that there's a decrease in planning and consultants, which is now a, an increase in the building inspector line. We changed the building inspector's title to land use administrator, and he's now consulting. We have another, we have a, um, a certified planner who is consulting for the planning board, um, in addition to our building inspector who has considerable planning experience, who is in-house. Um, working with that as well and attending those meetings and consulting for the zoning board and so um, that's just a, a, a dollar shift. Um, we've split out the MSW's municipal solid waste, that's what also called wet trash that you put in the compactor at the top of the hill. Um, that and the demolition fees, which is the carpeting and shingles and that, those things, they've been combined. We're now separating them so that we can try to track them um, better and, and figure out how, what the trending is over time. Um, we also um, will include winter help in the highway part-time line because while we do have part-time staff that works all year round, um, there are fluctuations in that line that we kind of need to remind ourselves, oh yes, the plow truck drivers are in there. So it's a function of winter. So as much as we try to watch that line and control it, we get hung up on, oh yes, plow truck drivers. Um, then there are lines included for things like paper recycling. Since we've separated out recycling, now there are lines in the budget to track and show the expenses related to all those recyclables, which um, are saving us a lot of money, by the way. So um, our, our per ton rate is approximately $68.50 for, um, per ton for anything that goes in demolition or wet trash. And all the recycling, some of it has a cost, but some of it is revenue, and it's all less than that. So um, whatever you can do to, particularly for waste elsewhere, is really helpful. Um, that's another conversation, but it, you know, it's one of my, I, I, like, I like trash, but I'm going to figure this one out. So anybody who likes to talk trash, keep the office and we'll touch that. Um, Electrical expenses in government buildings is projected to be down because we, um, the select board signed a contract with an Eversource contractor to change the lights to LEDs. So the savings in the transfer station are less than the other, um, the, the, than the fire department and highway shed that were done this year because they have a number of things like equipment and bailers that don't benefit from LED conversion. Um, they've also signed a contract for the town hall to be completed in 2020. That is a 50-50 um, cost sharing program with the state. So the select board chose to pay for the 50% the town would owe on those projects in the 2019 budget. So there's no cost of that going forward, only savings. If they were to have financed that 50%, it would have been a two to two and a half year return on investment um, for the cost of the conversion. Okay, so the conversation has been going now for, for a couple of years about compensation and trying to address um, what the department heads are finding that they need and what is warranted in the market for the positions that they supervise and what we're currently paying those employees. So the select board took um, the first act, the, the action this year in, in 20, well, sorry, last year in 2019, they increased all of the police salaries for full timers and part timers, with the exception of two positions, and they changed the transfer station attendant rate as well. So um, those are much better. Um, Otherwise, for people not addressed, there's a 2% increase in salary lines to try to keep the salaries close to market rate. Um, and then we spoke about the area pressures. Um, they also they, they increased the, um, the town clerk's stipend from $200 to $300 per election, and there is um, a budgetary request 
in the police chief's line for an adjustment as well. The fire department, um, this has been you know, a conversation for a few years now that we require trained staff um, certified with a given amount of experience to um, do what they do for us. And for retention and acknowledgement of the experience and skills that they have and need, um, we're, we're trying to find a way to compensate them for that, though um, they are still an on-call force. So um, we're not unusual in the state of New Hampshire for having the structure of the fire department that we have, but um, the select board is trying to work with the fire department to figure out what is reasonable um, over time, which um, will not be really a market rate. We, we all have to acknowledge that it's, it's not really going to be a market rate. The conversation in the past was minimum wage, whether or not they can get minimum wage or are at minimum wage or will achieve something more like a starting part-time rate for, for calls. It, it's all under discussion. Um, but they have new software now that helps them to track the calls and keep track of the time that people are putting in. And so part of, um, part of the acknowledgement of this conversation is moving the fire chief who has a stipend for his elected position and, and his responsibilities. Um, he also has been earning um, call, um, call earnings for, they get, point, they, get, they get paid for how many calls that they, they go on. So um, bringing his stipend up to $15,000 is approximately the average or a little bit more than average of what he's been earning between his stipend and the calls. Um, by removing him out from the call salary line, we can increase the amount of money available for everybody else to earn for those calls. Um, something to note about the salary line, though, which may be confusing, is that last year the Budget Committee's proposed budget passed, which was $5,000 lower in that line than what the Select Board was proposing. And so the Select Board did authorize that $5,000 um, in that line. So then there's an additional request for $5,000 this year. So um, the town approved $46,000 for that line to be shared among their 25 or so firefighters. Um, and then the select board allowed them to have the 51 they originally agreed to, and now we're requesting another five on top of that for that line. Um, and that will help us sort of ascertain what is, what is, what is the hourly rate, because it's not really hourly, that they would be earning once that adjustment happens. So we're trying to collect data and trending to move towards something better. I'm sorry, I can be um, The highway department, they requested an additional full-time staff person. There are, um, you can do more with more people and they are very pragmatic, um, skilled people who can do lots of things and if we give them more supplies and more time and more manpower, they will do more things and they want to and that's great. Um, the select board is not prioritizing that at this time amongst all the other things. Um, they, they are already doing more with the um, people that they have. They, they're in their second or third year of having a second full-time person. It's relatively new. So there is more stuff already getting done than ever was done in the past. When they do things for us, they're doing them less expensively than have been done because we have more manpower. So we're doing less with contractors than we used to do. Um, there's a decrease in their um, vehicle maintenance line, um, vehicle maintenance line because we have a pretty new fleet now. So we're assuming that we shouldn't be needing what we needed before. Um, but they want to take that savings and the savings from um, purchasing equipment and have that fund equipment and the purchase of fund the, the, the purpose of having rented equipment is having um, excavators can do better at ditch work than the Volvo back that we currently have. So it's just about for certain projects, um, for example, we have one um, back around um, the American Legion. We have water issues around. Um, the intersection of um, 
Locust Street and Foundry Street. And so we need to do more ditch work behind the Legion. Um, maintaining ditches and culverts um, prevents waters from getting up over, over the road and undermining the road. So, so that's um, primarily the point of that. The plan for roads, everybody always wants to know the plan for roads. Um, we're going to finish um, the woodlands with a top coat. That is the plan currently um, for this summer. And finish Sligo with what already has been done. So reclaiming Sligo Road down to gravel and building a better base and putting top coat on it, which is what happened to the first half of Sligo that happened this past summer. So we'll complete that, but binder coats shouldn't be left for a long time, so that's going to need a top coat um, within the next year or two. Um, the, we do have a road plan. Um, it's out of date. We're pretty much following it. Um, that requires, it, it was built as a pilot program of Stratford Regional Planning. Um, it's no longer a pilot program, which means that it costs money now. So um, we're trying, um, we don't want to do that every year. There's not really a need to do that every year, but it will be coming soon that we will have to, with their help or not with their help, evaluate the roads and um, update the plan. So, more detail of transfer station, yay. So, so the department, 30% 30, 30 increase on the department overall. Um, they increased the salaries, but that's really, um, Within, they did that at the end of the year after this budget was proposed. Some, something to note about the budget process now with SB2 is that everybody figured out this budget um, way before the year was over. And so you're looking at a budget that has unaudited financials through the end of the year. Um, you have better, better data in front of you than these people did when they made this proposal. So um, they, they did have, they were, um, in any case, the, the salaries is within the line um, of the proposed budget, even though that decision was made after this um, proposal was created, if that makes sense. 17% um, in, in MSW and tipping. And so some of that you can expect, like I said, from the rates, but volume is up. Um, and when volume is up, that means you're hauling more. And there's also an expense to hauling. So we're doing much better with that because we have the second compactor. So we're only hauling full loads, but we're still hauling a lot more trash than we ever were, and that's problematic. So scales, it's so exciting. You're going to love this. Maybe not so much. Um, currently, you drive with your pickup truck or whatever you've got to um, the, the, the hut there, we would hope. We, this is the process we hope you all follow. And, and you say, look at my stuff, how much does it cost? And they eyeball it and, and say, it's $10, it's $15, and you pay the fee, and you put your stuff in the demo bin there. Well, um, that fee is not at all matching. It's maybe a third of the expense of um, getting rid of that debris, maybe. It, it's, it's a far cry. So. Um, the other problem is that we're paying by weight to dispose of these things, and you might have a truckload of feathers or a truckload of really heavy shingles, and you're going to be paying the same, whereas we're going to be paying something vastly different. So we're trying to figure that out, and so we have scales now. They're not fancy, nice drive-on scales, but um, we're going to have some kind of bin. The transfer station staff is going to work for a number of months weighing things to determine what is an appropriate fee for regular items like a love seat, a stuffed chair, um, a mattress, so that those fees will make more sense. And then we may ultimately work toward um, charging per pound for um, what you're disposing of. Um, that's all under evaluation, but the point is to try to do something that makes more sense so that people are actually paying for what the what our cost is or closer. Um, so that's what scales are about. Brush chipping is, um, they, they moved that at one time to try to farm it all out and have people come and get all the brush and chip it. Um, <coughs> we're, we're moving toward a combined approach of burning what we can and um, if we have to, or for larger items, having a contractor come in and dispose of the rest of it. Recreation, I touched on this um, a little bit. Camp 
for all the is, is in peril. You might have seen a, an, an announcement of that. We had a meeting about that, and not a lot of people came. Um, but, but the select board did receive a number of emails, and we know that parents care about the program. Um, so there's an ongoing discussion. At this point, the program is going on, but um, the committee has a lot of work to do with creating forms and procedures, and there may be a legal review of manuals, and, and we're not sure what, but um, they have to meet some kind of, we have to make sure that we're meeting some kind of minimum liability level with that. So um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. but. Um, Team Camp, though. Team Camp has been a great program, but not a lot of students are taking advantage of it, and it's distracting the committee from their work on Camp Raleigh. So the effort is to use um, the, the Team Camp money, more or less, um, to try to fund a part-time rec director who will help with the administration of that department and coordinate with the committee. You know, committees really ought to be decision-making bodies and not so much the doers, and it helps when they're doers, but when you've got too many hands in the pot, um, it, it's, it's hard to figure out who's doing what and what the chain of command and accountability is. It just doesn't help with liability. And so a rep director would allow them to delegate and have one person doing a lot of things, and they could potentially manage um, the soccer program and, and some other things going on. But that means we're losing the revenue from that program. So that's, that's the downside of that. Um, winter basketball, our kids don't seem to want to move. Um, so that's probably not a shocker for those of you who work in the school and the parents, but um, the enrollment for winter has been, for, for um, basketball's down for a couple of years now and probably longer. And so we have a new rec committee member who is passionate about soccer for really little kids, which is cool because then maybe we can start them young, like, you know, I think, you know, three through six or something, really little. So maybe getting them used to being active can help um, build programming for when the kids get older. And the committee's still um, committed to trying to offer programming for um, seniors, and that's an ongoing conversation. That line for senior programming increased slightly. They've been offering coffee for um, down at the community room in the library for um, seniors. They've done it a few times. I, I believe they're going to take a break from that in, until spring, but look out for that because they're trying to do more for the seniors in town. Okay, so I don't know if you want to um, pause and take um, public comment on the operating budget or I can go on and talk about more articles. So if you have any questions so far on the operating budget, I um, ask you to come up to the microphone um, and take uh, your name and where you live, and I will probably just go the floor to Caroline uh, to answer your questions. Celia Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Um, with the fire department to software, who is keeping track of it? Is it in town? Is it the fire department directly? Is it out of town at the county level? The fire department's gone through um, a huge uh, structural shift since we lost our assistant chief about a year ago. And so now they have um, all the officers handling responsibilities. He, he, he handled, the assistant chief handled um, most of the office administrative work. And now I can't speak specifically to, um, to who, but um, they're managing that in-house um, amongst the various officers. When do you believe you'll have the opportunity to review the road plan and who will be doing it if it's not going to be scrapped at regional planning? That'll be a, a conversation for the time once we figure out what the cost for review is. There's a number of levels in which Stratford um, Regional Planning could manage that um, for us or not, but for sure it would involve the road agent and myself and select board members if they, if 
they want to. Um, there are a number of things to think about outside of the obvious visual condition of a road, such as um, how much it's used and whether or not it's a bus route or cut through route, route or, or things like that. So um, I don't really have an answer for that right now, but the board at the time will determine that. And finally, now that we have scales, what is the cost for personnel to manage that for the time being and going into the future? The transfer station staff and select board have not determined exactly how this is going to work. The first step is to set up the scales and in their own time, in, in their own time, you know, when, when they're not dealing directly with residents to weigh materials that they're already receiving, to see, you know, this may be a phased approach, I guess is what they're, you know, what I'm saying, that the first step is likely to be get more appropriate fees for the things that are already listed in that fee structure, you know, for, for mattresses, for example. Um, as far as their time, it is going to take more time, and so it may be that, you know, you only can dispose of demo on Saturdays or something when we have more staff. I'm not reporting that will be the case, but uh, we might have to think outside the box for this one because it, it will take more time to dispose of demolition because you're going to depending on how this gets rolled out. So it's new and there's not really a firm answer about that, except that the budget reflects that salaries will pay for the people we have now, plus an additional person for Saturdays only at some point in the future to accommodate for the fact that Saturdays are busier and um, don't, this new thing, whatever it is, when the transfer station is ready, will take more time. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Paul Castle, no way. So, I got a question. I was wondering, so about four or five years ago, we had a town administrator that was part-time. This is probably a direct line of the select board. I think just to, just to be clear, Paul, you're, you're asking as a, as a town resident. resident yes. Um, so, four or five years ago, we had a part-time town administrator that basically worked 20 hours a week. Um, so now we're talking, we have a full-time town administrator at 40 hours a week. Now a bookkeeper. A bookkeeper that was at 20, that's going to 20, 20 and a half. Is there anybody else paid underneath the town administrator? As far as town administration is concerned, it is just myself, the bookkeeper, administrative assistant. I do have other people who report to me who don't directly help with office things. Are they paid? Well, for example, the custodial staff and oh, okay. you know the building, the land use administrator and um, the, the minute takers. All so, that so in my the question is again, I don't know if this is to you, the select board, but what has changed in the last four to five years that? We've got in town business that we know we need a full time town administrator at 65 grand and then a part time bookkeeper at 22 and a half hours at whatever his pay is. What, what actually has changed running Quite the town? Quite a lot. That's a really great question, and I expect that it's a common question, and the answer is quite a lot. Um, now, would the select board be more willing to answer? You can choose who you want to have answer the question. I mean, I, you know. Well, who, who controls the administrative budget? Is it the select board? They're the ultimate decision makers. So I make recommendations to them. That's what I'm going to ask, please. I'll speak on that behalf. Okay. Can you all hear me? Go ahead. Go
requirements and stormwater and you know there's just so many other things that are being mandated for the, for the town to do which requires more hours. So that much has changed in the last four or five. I'm just trying to get a, get a grasp of the whole thing. Absolutely. Stormwater for one. Yeah. Are we planning to add any more positions underneath the town ministry or anything like that? Or, I mean, is it going to keep on growing and growing? Well, because not as long as the government and state and federal government doesn't add on more responsibilities for our, our team to do. I mean, at this so point, this no, so, there's not. So, uh, I'm trying to understand, too, there was a comment about uh, the select board needs to have time to have more of a select board. Uh, broader view. So is the select board not, I'm trying to understand what the role of the select board is in the town administrator and what has changed in the last three four years. But you said that the, what, the, the select board in the past used to spend more time doing their Well, job. they were, they had the time to come into the office and do work during the day. Okay. And so they, they were there a lot. Mr. Jansen, Suzanne, many, many, many hours during the day. We can't do that. We are still holding the same responsibilities that every other board, select board member did. It's just, it's the amount of time that we can put in. And I can say that we all put in an exceptional amount of time in, in the position and we're still the authority. Okay. My question, that just seems kind of like it's growing and it's going to grow more. That's my As it is with every department. Well, the town and so and so has the population changed that much that we need that much more town administrator because it just seems like the population's probably gone down a little bit. It's maybe it's the same. So something doesn't quite make sense, but that's what I'm asking. Denise, if you could stay there, Denise. I, I, I think I can bring a little clarity and, uh, and, and others can, uh, and maybe, maybe some other people can make it even clearer. It's my understanding that we have never had a town administrator before our current town administrator. That is a job officially recognized by the state. We have, and under state uh, uh, regulation, we've had a, we've had a, or, well, it, it's, it's a job that's, I don't believe we've ever had a real town administrator before. We've had part-time help to help the select board do things. We had a bookkeeper. We had a bookkeeper before. Um, and so we now have a town administrator, which is different from a town manager. The town administrator reports directly to the select board. So the select board is still in charge. Mm -hmm. And now they have uh, a town administrator. We have a town administrator who handles all of the administration, all of the work uh, oh, I in understand. the office. That oh, gets I understand that. I just, just want to please, there's somebody at the microphone. I don't think it's helpful to the understanding. This is a public hearing for the public. It's not meant to be a private conversation between members of the budget committee and members of the public who are addressing the. Well, I'm, I'm speaking as a town uh, resident right now, so. You don't. Again, point of order. One person typically has the floor at a time, and there's not crosstalk with people trying to talk over. I apologize. Anyway, I'm just trying to clarify that we, we haven't had an official town administrator in the past. This is, uh, this is a, a relatively new position, um, and, and, and the work that that administrator is overseeing is, is, is being um, is defined each year as we go forward, and it grows because the, administra the, administ the, admin the administrative work continues to grow in the town. I, I believe that's the case, correct? Correct. That's why I just want to clarify. <clears throat> From a historical perspective, the official town administrator position had started in January of 2019. So even though it is the same person who is providing administrative support to the board, it's not the same level of responsibility and we're not the same level of salary. Um, also historically, um, you know, with regard to the kinds of things that the, the, the scale, the scope, the breadth and depth of administrative duties that the town has to comply with, 
Um, it's interesting, uh, Dr. Godofsky, who's the superintendent of the schools, has this poster that I've seen. And it was in, I think, 1910 or 1920, the amount of administrative reports, compliance issues, whatever, that school districts had to engage in. And it was about this long. And if you fast forward to roughly today, the amount of those same kinds of things, compliance issues, administrative reports, blah, 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 is like this. I suspect, although I haven't seen anything like it, I suspect that if you did the same thing at a town level, a municipal level, that you would see the same level of increase in the kinds of things that, that the town has to report on to be involved in. Across the country, 
um, and everybody's facing across the state, but it's, it's, it's an opinion. And we don't have a choice, essentially. So. Anybody else has questions about the operating budget? Um, come forward, but if not, we can move on to the uh, Kelly Dow, Budget Committee. I got two questions. Line 25, contingency. Why did we go up when we didn't spend all the money this year? And number two, what is the oper uh, what is the tax impact on the operating budget? Contingency before 2009 for the recent past few years that the Select Board have budgeted contingency um, has been 1% of the previous year's um, budget, operating budget. So the Select Board didn't do that for 2019, but they chose to do that for 2020. Um, it's, it's important to recognize that whatever is not spent in the operating budget funds the fund balance, and you need to have fund balance within a certain range and it's a value statement of the select board in one of the many policies that we don't have about how we feel about how we manage money around here about what the fund balance would be. So, so the point of contingency is to help in an emergency because it happens and when emergencies happen they're big because equipment is expensive and roads are expensive and you know a lot of the operations that happen around here are subject to the weather that you can't predict. So that's the point of contingency and just increasing it because you never know how much things are going to cost until you're in it, but also because um, it's important to protect fund balance because should there be an emergency that you cannot handle within the operating budget, you can look to the Department of Revenue and the Budget Committee for, per, um, for permission to extend the fund balance, but you have to have money there to spend. So, where we are within a, you know, the middle of a healthy range, um, according to the standards that um, DRA, the Department of Revenue, sets forth, um, who's to say what is enough that might take care of, you know, a washed out road, for example, could be hundreds of thousands of dollars, or tens of, you know, it, should there be a storm event and storms are getting worse. So, you know, I can go on, but that's the point of, um, this board chose to go back to the model of balancing 1% of the previous year's operating budget. And then the tax rate impact, I have a slide at the end about that. The tax rate impact for the operating budget is 16 cents higher than the previous year's um, operating budget. However, should all things, and this is confusing, if everything passes, essentially the tax rate would be level because what we're proposing for capital items um, that have a tax impact is, is less than before. So um, while it does cost 16 cents more than last year, um, if you, well, keep in mind that the default budget doesn't mean, you know, the default budget too would have a tax impact, which I have not calculated. Um, I lost my train of thought. The, so so if, the, if the budget wasn't going to pass, I guess is my thought, that, that the default budget doesn't mean it wouldn't have an impact. There's still some budgetary uh, tax rate impact to that, but that everything can pass and still the tax rate would be estimated to be level. You're saying with warrants and the operating budget, yes. we're going to be level funded? Yes. No. Good morning, Jason Sargent, Stockdale Circle. I just have a quick question about the transfer station fees. Um, for the, uh, the dramatic increase in the, uh, the demo, um, when, we, when we go to do price setting for if, if it's going to be by weight, is, is, uh, is the idea that the, the rate that we charge uh, people to, to uh, dispose of things through that waste stream be the same rate that the town would be expected to pay, or is it uh, some type of proration or offset? I don't know if you understand that. I, I do understand exactly what you're saying. Um, in theory, at this point, the idea would be that it would at least better offset what people are disposing, but it really ought to be, I think the community ought to weigh in on this. It's a value statement. So on the one hand, people who dispose of things should pay to dispose of those things. 
Um, and so it should match what we need to pay to dispose of those things. On the other hand, if it's exorbitantly expensive to dispose of a mattress, then people are going <coughs> to dump it in the woods. So I don't have an answer to that. And I think once we start using the scales and see what the price for a mattress is, for example, then the board can decide if people are really going to pay that and is that reasonable or should they subsidize it with the tax rate. Charlie from Sligo Road, I apologize if I'm making you repeat something. Um, line 289, column K, 2019 approved appropriation is blank on line pretty copy. I wonder what the total appropriated uh, operating budget is. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry, what line is that? 289. Yes, I see that. I see what you're saying. There is there is an error. I would direct you to 269. That will at least tell you the total of the operating budget. But you're quite right that um, for one thing, there's no default budget of operate of capital items. So that's why that column is blank. But then K, as you as you know, um, is is missing a total. So if you stay tuned for the deliberative session, I'll make better details. Hello, Jason Hatfield, Second Street. Uh, what happens if you guys don't comply with the EPA's 50 page thing? They haven't answered that directly, but the short answer is they have the authority, the same as if you dumped chemicals in a storm drain, um, which anything that goes into the river like that. So, so the, the permit is allowing us to dump our storm water through our storm water drains into culverts right by the river and into the river itself. And so um, operating in violation really wouldn't be any different from dumping chemicals into a storm drain knowingly like that go into the river. And that's $2,000 a day. This is Kevin Slido Road. Um, I have a question going back to the transfer station and the increase in the demo, amount of demo material we're getting. Um, are we feeling fairly confident that this, do we have ways to ensure that it's coming from town? Because I know that there are a number of surrounding towns that have various uh, different types of ways to charge for different materials that we might bring to the transfer station. And so other than the stickers on your car that ask you to ensure that what you're bringing is in fact from generated within the town of Bronxford. I'm just curious if there's other ways um, that that's being monitored. That's a really good question. Um, in this whole conversation, it's important to recognize that regionally, we're the only one around here, um, at least as far as having Dover and Somersworth next to us, who are much larger communities where you have pay as you throw, there's definitely incentive to keep your transfer station sticker when you move out of town, or to bring your friend's trash as a favor, or any one of a number of things, um, because we, you know, in, in the demo, we know that it's not meeting our expenses, and so it's, you know, if you have access by some less than above board reason to access our transfer station, um, it's the least expensive thing in the region to do with your waste. And so um, I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing an uptick. We do have a few new homes in town as well, which is important to recognize. The other thing is that we have contractors in town, and who's to say that the waste from their projects that may be out of town aren't hitting our transfer station as well. So um, transfer station um, attendants um, have the authority to ask for building permits um, from contractors to show that if you have a permit that says it's a plumbing project, then you know maybe they might ask a question if they get roofing shingles every week or you know something like that. So at least that they would have to match. Um, but as long as we are the cheapest thing in town, I, I expect that we're going to be higher per capita in waste disposal than Dover and Summersworth, for example. And um, 
The other thing, you know, I'll just put in a plug for Paisley Throw, the, the colored bags that are the bane of every Dover and Summersworth resident. Um, they're an incentive to keep your trash volume down, and you don't have that. So why should you recycle? Because you're not necessarily cognizant of difference in the rate, and you pay your taxes, and, you know, everybody has different values around what lengths <coughs> to go to to recycle or not. So um, if we were to go to pay as you throw, then that could incentivize people to recycle more. And also, um, there are composting programs that I would very much like to look into. Compost is 30% of the waste, the weight of waste. So for those who compost, they're disposing of less material, but if we can commercialize a composting operation, which would again just be a transfer station, not, a, not an actual composting station, um, that would reduce the amount of waste too, but it would also, if you roll it out at the same time as pay as you throw, whatever we can do, which is really annoying, then that will incentivize people to um, reduce costs too. It brings in approximately $15,000 a year. It's only a few years old. 
I don't know that we would need all of the $25,000, but it would, we're looking for authorization of up to $25,000 um, to hit the worst areas first and see how far we can get to assure that we can better maintain, like, you know, winter maintenance um, of, of the walkways for the kids going to school um, would be the priority. Cruisers. Um, we have two cruiser situations, um, two cruiser born articles. This one is for the cruiser that was approved at town meeting in 2019. The difference of one word makes all the difference um, sometimes. So the Department of Revenue did not allow us to take, it, it was a three-year lease, they did not allow us to take the first <coughs> lease payment out of the capital improvement plan, capital reserve fund, um, for reasons I won't bore you with. But um, we had to find that in the operating budget. So this article is to authorize the second year payment from the Capital Improvement Plan Capital Reserve Fund. We will be looking for lease payments through warrant articles for every year there is a lease payment going forward, both for this cruiser, which um, we just took delivery of, um, that was authorized in 2019, and then in the next slide for the one that we're asking for in 2020. We are, cruisers um, did not get replaced as they should have, because a number of years ago one was in an accident and wasn't replaced, and so the fleet is really high mileage. And so um, we're asking for two in a row um, in order to bring the overall mileage down. Um, the, then I think um, for the proposal for 21, 2021 may or may not include a cruiser depending on whether or not, um, depending on how the mileage of the fleet is at that time. So this is for the authorization of the second year lease payment for the 2019 cruiser. And then this here is the warrant article for the next cruiser that we're asking for in 2020. Um, another three year lease, $13,000 to come from the um, capital improvement plan, capital reserve fund for equipping the vehicle and then another 13 from that fund for the lease payment. Um, and then all the, we would put articles in the warrant in future years for the subsequent payment. So um, there's a thousand dollar gap from what we're asking for in the funding of that plan and that would come from taxation for this cruiser. The fire department has a really old set of what we call the jaws of life. There are three different um, Mark, I'm sorry, it's not my public hearing, so if you want to, I just want to, well, if you can wait to the end, then I'll have to Thank you. I just don't want to have you wait. Um, three pieces of equipment together collectively are called the jaws of life. Right now it's a, I guess, a hydraulic, an old hydraulic version that is really old and not reliable. They now have a newer version, which is battery operated, easier to use, and stronger. It's three separate pieces of equipment for approximately $10,000 a piece. Um, it's something that um, it, it mutual aid requires. We are part of a region where, probably every region, um, we'll respond to other people's fires in hopes that they would respond to ours as needed, and that's what happens, and it works. Um, but you have to, um, be an equal um, participant in that to some degree. And this is one of those things that we have to be able to supply these at sea. Um, they are required on route, like a lot of the things, unfortunately, that happen on Route 4. So the fire department is asking for this piece of equipment funded from the Capital Improvement Plan for the Reserve Fund. The town hall generator um, is old and we can't find parts for it, or it's really difficult to find parts for it. And so we're requesting authorization to have it replaced, which doesn't mean that we would replace it necessarily. Um, much like the town hall boiler from last year, we received authorization for that, but then we got word that it's really doing okay and it can perhaps wait a little bit. So uh, the select board voted to carry over that authorization into 2020. So. Um, the boiler may get done in 2020 if it seems to be needed, or it may be another request. <coughs> it's a building question. It's the, it's the white elephant, the building question. Um, so we're looking for authorization to fix it because it's absolutely necessary if it really becomes unrepairable and needs fixing, or if the board should decide to be proactive about it. Oh. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, go back. You were right. You were right. It leads right into the next one. Thank you. So, the building question. The town hall assessment is, of course, very much tied to the police department, police station question. Um, the select board at, the time, at this time last year elected not to put the police station on the ballot for this past year because there were a number of questions about, well, should we bring the town hall or not? And how do we know the answer to that without really assessing our town hall and knowing what it means and what its potential is and, and all those things? So the select board engaged with a contractor to this past year to determine what are the needs of the police department um, for the next 30 years. And so should we build a police department, what, what would be the appropriate size given the development pressures, given how much of the land we have, to make sure it's the right thing going forward. Um, the Space Needs Committee never really took off this year because we were waiting for data for them to consider from this police consulting firm. We had a problem with that contractor and that product's no longer going forward. So here we are, um, time, the, the once a year opportunity to vote and try to move something forward. The thought is, let's figure out the building town hall, what does it need, what could it be? And I have to say, we're very new in this conversation and we don't know what exactly this looks like. So to some extent, this is an arbitrary number. It is based on the cost to assess this building that we're in a number of years ago. It's a bigger building, but it's also an old number for this bigger building. So we are hoping that there's a correlation and it will allow us to get started with some answers. Um, the other question about this is whether or not to go for um, public funding, LSHIP funding, um, that takes longer, but there's more offsetting revenue if we do in fact undertake a project to renovate the town hall in some, in some way. It did not receive a full renovation at its last renovation um, about 20 or 21 years ago. The select board at the time didn't, um, they, they put on the warrant what they thought the price would be to renovate the building, $750,000. And then after that, they got um, they put it out to bid, and the lowest bid was $1.2 million. So the building never received its a full renovation, and so um, everybody's kind of begrudged it ever since that it still needs work, and it, and it still needs things, and it's not fully insulated. And so we're, the, the select board has taken measures to do what they can about the building for now. We're getting windows fixed because they don't close properly, and so there's key gloss. They painted the foyer. Um, they replaced um, one of the AC units downstairs. Um, so, so they're trying to keep up with the building and at least not ignore it. But while you know we're in flux with you know how to move forward, and this building is part of figuring out this building is part of the answer to that. I spoke with um, Peter Mishu, um, long time town historian that you all know. So, so the, it's it's important to know that the building's on the historic registry of deeds. Um, it's, it's a dis divisive issue. Some people, you know, begrudge the building. Some people want to save it because it's a historic landmark. Um, the assessment can help us determine, if we frame it correctly, what is the potential of that building if we were to get offsetting revenue or um, somehow fundraise to renovate the upstairs. Um, he, he was very clear that if we were to find um, LCHIP funding, for example, if we were to seek LCHIP funding, um, it, it, you have to consider the building as a whole. And the building as a whole is, in, includes the potential of the Grand Theater upstairs. So if that were to be renovated and then we were to allow nonprofits to have concerts and theater up there or whatnot, um, what would be the return on investment in, in allowing that income? And, and also, what is the cultural value to our town? And do the townspeople even care? So, so that's kind of the conversation at this point. Um, and also, that upstairs would provide meeting space. Right now, the conference room at the town hall 
has a limited capacity, and we couldn't hold this meeting here today at the town hall. So um, it would allow for bigger meeting space like it once did for the town. So it's an ongoing conversation. It's a little bit of a, a, a chicken and egg, um, but we're trying to explore it and get more information for the people to then evaluate to decide whether or how to move forward. The Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. This, um, this fund is the fund that correlates with the Capital Improvement Plan. The Select Board is still revising the Capital Improvement Plan, which is the projection of the next 10 years of when we're going to purchase capital items and how much money we're putting away toward those things. But every year we put money into this fund so that every year we can purchase whatever's on the schedule um, for purchase. And this is another one of those bigger value statements. In, in theory, it would be nice if they were all fully funded by the fund at the time of purchase, so then there's no tax impact. Um, right now, that's not the case. I think it's just worth notice, noting that there are $3.5 million worth of assets <coughs> on that plan, and $186,000 is not 10% of that. So, we're not yet meeting the goal, if, if that is the goal, of fully funding those things when they become up for purchase. But in any case, the Select Board's recommendation for um, transfer into that fund um, this year is $186,895. The town revaluation, this is um, a request every year to put money away so that once every five years, as we're mandated by the Department of Revenue to um, do the reval of all the assessed values in town, it allows us to do that without a tax impact at that time. So we're asking for um, that portion of it, 18750 for this year, to go into that fund. The Culvert Repair and Replacement Fund is only a few years old. Um, it's We don't know what all our infrastructure is, really, because we don't have all the time to figure it out, because a lot of it's underground and it hasn't, you know, it's 50 years old, or, or who knows how old. Um, so we're still discovering issues. And so what um, this year's question is about water at the intersection of Locust Street and Foundry. We, um, there's, a dam, there's a dam on Locust Street um, to, for, for a stream that feeds from the Pine Street culvert area that we repaired a couple years ago. So, greatly improved flow in that culvert, but um, that flow may be exacerbating um, a collapsed culvert that goes from underneath that dam, like downhill of that dam, through the stormwater structures into the river on the other side of the Legion ball field. So um, there are small sinkholes at the front of the at, the at the front of the ball field. You can see that their fence is a little bit um, not level because of those sinkholes. So we really need to get an engineer to determine what is the um, appropriate size culvert and help us figure out how to fix what is probably everything from behind the legion out to the river, but we're not really sure. And there's another culvert um, that feeds, that, that allows that retention pond on Foundry Street to drain out into the river as well. And we know that water isn't flowing very well that way. So um, this is why you've noticed a few times that Foundry Street is closed and there's a ring event because we've got drainage issues. So that is what, that is, I would say the, the soonest priority for these funds, but it's about putting money away so that as we discover these issues, because they're expensive, um, that we'll have um, more ability to fund their remediation. Okay, so um, this one is an interesting article because it's different from everything else in, in that um, you, you get to have a little bit more of a value statement about the future of this community and it should be considered that way. I also just want to tip off the budget committee that this article is different from the one that was given to you earlier in the week. It had said $10,000. It's really $15,000 that the select board is proposing for this fund. And the reason for that error is exactly why this is an interesting article because um, the standard request has been $10,000, and 
you are all probably aware of the 58-acre parcel on their road that is for sale. And the master plan, which is highly out of date, reflects that the people of Rollinsford really value open space and the beauty of Rollinsford. Um, this is the way to protect that. So you all as voters in the deliberative session can change the amount of money to go in this fund or not. And then on March 10th you can vote for this or not. But it's important to know that when large parcels of land um, come up for sale, that if we all want to preserve them, then the way to do that is through this fund. Um, the balance is on that green sheet in front of you. It's, it's less than $200,000. The way to save these large parcels is by working with conservation agencies who choose to help us or not based on how committed we appear to be in saving land. And, and this is what they look at. So $10,000 doesn't show much of a commitment when you're looking at that parcel, which is for sale for $2.5 million. Um, they only help with the assessed value of the property, so it doesn't mean that if we had the ability to put it in conservation, that we would that it would be purchased and saved for the amount of two 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 and a half million dollars. But for sure, it's more than the two hundred thousand dollars that we don't exactly have. So um, the conservation commission requests that the select board put twenty five thousand dollars in this fund this year in order to get people's attention that it is different from the standard annual request. Um, the select board settled on 15 as um, sort of a middle ground, but I just want to bring your attention um, to the fact that it's a conversation point about what do you want Rollinsford to look like. We, um, Summersworth is, I think, the second most densely populated um, community in New Hampshire. Um, Dover has, I think you can tell, like pretty much reached its development max. So we are seeing that in our assessed value, but you're going to see that with development pressure. Um, you all get to decide what to do with that, but this is the mechanism that you would use to decide how you feel about that. This is a related warrant article. It takes $5,000 from that fund at the request of a landowner who has land that they would like to put into conservation. It helps with the surveying and relating the related expenses that it would take to um, go through that process. Um, it does not, um, it only happens if there is a request to use it. It's a standard annual request. And so this is the end. This is the, the bottom line. There, there's a small decrease in the, in the revenue. Part of that is due to police details, which were down this past year because our police department has not been fully staffed, so they were not able to meet the need. Um, that is expected to be better in this coming year. Um, also, um, team camp. Um, Vehicles are, vehicle registrations are slightly down. It, it's not any one thing, but it's a, it's a few smaller things. But our assessed valuation is, is going up, and that's overall a good thing. Um, but like I said, um, 16 cents um, for the operating budget is the impact over last year, but because most of those capital items are not looking for tax impact, the only ones um, that would have a tax impact are the town hall assessment for $30,000 and the $1,000 um, shortfall in the um, request for the police reserve fund, the capital improvement plan, capital reserve fund. So $31,000 of taxation out of the capital <coughs> items plus the operating budget um, would altogether keep the tax rate level if it all approved. Okay, same process. If you have questions about the Warren articles, please come to the microphone. And uh, can we get the microphone fixed so it's looking up? And then just state your name and where you live and then ask your question. And I will probably you forward to uh, get on. I can meet you from the head of the line. 
do have a couple of questions, and I don't want to interfere with other people asking questions, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, questions about lines 272 and 273. Um, they seem to show the full price of a cruiser. And I'm wondering, does that, how does that square with the public presentation that it was a $13,000 lease payment? You're right, it does. And, and that's just about the, it, it was meant in my eyes to reflect the overall value of the Warren article, but it's not the impact, as you say. It's not the requested appropriation. Right. Okay. Uh, and then a question about line 278, the boiler. Uh, in the public presentation, you mentioned that it was a carryover from 2019, but it's zeroed out in 2020. And I'm wondering if you need uh, voter authorization to expend the funds in 2020. No. Okay. That, that authorization is carried forward. Board articles, financial board articles, if not carried out in the year in which they're authorized, the select board can vote to carry them forward with the authorization to carry them out for one year only. Uh, so 
Sully Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Um, the conditions of the sidewalks, how are they being assessed? Um, are they being assessed in town? And what about the sidewalks that have disappeared over the years? The, I have heard that the, historically there was one on Foundry Street, and I've also known in my neighborhood that they've been um, turned into driveways. People have, uh, at one time they were um, pavement, and they've been um, paved over when people have paved their driveway. So will those be assessed as sidewalks too, in poor condition or not? I'm not sure I understand the latter part of your conversation because for sure sidewalks transverse um, driveways and so when you repave a driveway it's kind of hard to not, um, you know, we want to talk to people when they do it, but often that may include a sidewalk portion, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a sidewalk there. It, um, one of the things about roads and, and side, you know, or biotic ways, and sidewalks are a road of sort, they're, they're part of the road right of way, is that um, there are theoretical roads, which, um, and theoretical, <coughs> it's, it's not just what you see. So um, even if it looks like it's repaved and, and you've got a driveway in your way, you know, the sidewalk is certainly still there, you walk over the driveway, but I may be not seeing that how you intended. So my neighborhood, is um, on the other side of the tracks. And there's only one or two sections of the sidewalk left in on my street, and it's in front of houses, and it's got a Cape Cod berm on it, so it's pavement with pavement that abuts the road. And to them, it looks like a walkway for that house. Or it was pavement that grass has now grown up through, or moss, because it wasn't maintained for years is the other section. So it's like there's no sidewalk there because it's now fully engrossed in the dirt and um, vegetation of the ground. And so some of us who live in that area didn't realize there was a sidewalk there at one point, have redone our driveways, and we've incorporated it into our driveway because we never knew that that there was a sidewalk there previously. Thank you for that. I, I would say to you what I would say to anybody else is that when you have um, concerns to let us know, um, but certainly because we're proposing to, to evaluate and do sidewalks, um, by all means the road agents here, and I think you can go have a look at that. That being said, um, we're assessing things visually and the priority is to get um, the most number of kids to and from school safely. So um, while they can look at that, I don't, I don't know, um, I can't comment on whether or not it would be addressed. We'll see how far the funding goes and um, how the road agent assess the issue. Um. I'm wondering what is the average mileage on a police cruiser um, before it gets turned over into a new one and what the mileage of our current police cruisers are. And I'd ask the chief to answer that question if you would mind. The vehicle that we just reviewed in 2019 had 155,000 miles on it. The next one has 130,000 miles on it by the end of 2020. That will have almost 180,000 miles on it, and that will be the vehicle that we're getting rid of. And then the, uh, the vehicle that we got uh, two years ago currently has 20, uh, excuse me, eight, uh, 80,000 miles on it, and then the, the one that I'm driving has 25,000 miles on it. And I guess this is more a procedural question, but the capital improvement plan um, or capital improvement group, is that made up by community members or department heads? Because it seems like there are, could be other groups that are represented there. Like um, maybe the rec. I know they don't have a department head currently, or the conservation commission. Are they on that group? And can they? voice what they would like to see for long-term plans. I know we at least have a member from the Committee on that, but can only give an answer. There was a year 
to where the select board at that time felt as though it ought to be a community group. Um, now it is not. Now it is a representative of the budget committee and a representative of the school. And um, planning board, um, in, in some ways most importantly, um, and the select board and myself. And um, the planning board need, so it's a funny thing because by law it's a combined document of the select board and the planning board. So um, it's, it's kind of hard to have um, public input on something that is, um, you know, kind of that level of um, technical. It, it wasn't, it didn't work really well, which doesn't mean that it couldn't work well again, but that's why the board shifted to the current model. Um, it, it allows for the planning board to have a voice, um, and then that group hears proposals from all the department heads. Um, the Conservation Commission has that article, um, and it's, so, so that's really their mechanism, um, yet there is an email, you know, there is a select board representative <coughs> and, and myself on that group, and the point of that is to, um, think about and consider things like a rec need or, you know, other committee needs. Um, but that's really the point of, I would say, my membership and the select board membership on the group because it's, um, it's, it's technical and it, um, in any case, it seemed to work um, fairly well this past year in the membership that it had, though that's up for annual consideration of the select board, how it would be, how it would work out. Um, the end format of the document is that of the select board. They just, you know, so the, that committee makes whatever recommendation to the select board, and the select board choose to put whatever articles on the warrant, some of which are um, informed by that process. Um, and then the select, the select board will, so, so it, I guess what I'm saying is that the committee is an advisory board, and it is the select board that um, works that document to decide what their values are about when to replace things and what they're going to plan to replace. Thank you. Just a quick question on that. The, the meetings are publicly noted, notified and, and open to the public, so um, there is an opportunity for the residents to have input on the CIP. Charlie Down, budget with Caroline, you were right. I didn't realize that the 30000 for the stormwater added into the revenue will make the operating budget a wash. My question is, what is your impact on the warrant articles on taxation? I haven't had the opportunity to break this down in all the ways that you can break it down, but if the... So, so this is where it would be interesting to know um, the short answer is I don't know. I worked out if everything passed, the, the tax impact of the $31,000. So the war, every other Warren article doesn't have a tax impact except for the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund because um, I omitted that one last one. That's certainly a tax, a large tax impact. Um, three and a half cents for $10,000. So for, for anything we're asking to spend for the value of $10,000, um, that does not have offsetting revenue from a grant or other source um, is a tax impact of three and a half cents. I figured that would be either 73 or 83, depending on the 30,000 <coughs> impact. I, I, like I said, I can't speak to that, but I, I will note that um, because I know that you, you, you do this, that you, you calculate the tax rate. The tax rate is what we are going, what we are proposing to spend minus whatever <coughs> revenue that you have to offset it, grants or, or um, you know, vehicle registrations or what have you, divided by the valuation. And so uh, I just want to note that I used the 2018 valuation we're getting to the weeds here, rather than the 2019 valuation because it more accurately reflects um, the valuation as, as we know it going forward because we had a blip um, 
this year an evaluation that I wouldn't expect to continue. So I want <coughs> it to be a more accurate um, forecast to use the 2018 valuation. So 2019 is higher and it would project a lower tax. The numbers I use is 295 million. Right. And it's 280 for um, 2018. Yes. Yes. So um, that difference in valuation is part of the one year um, less than expected tax bill. But you know, we sent the warning in your tax bill, be careful because it's lower. So it was lower not just because the school gave back $300,000, but also because we had this blip in valuation. Thank you. Lucy Platinum, Slide the Road. Um, just a uh, point of information about the um, Alpha Plan grants. So the Wentworth House also received a large LCHIP grant the same year as the Garrison Players. So we do have quite a bit of experience with it in town. You can get two types of grants. One type of grant is to actually do the renovation, but you can also get a grant to help with the structural surveys. So there could, in fact, be the possibility of applying for one of those grants to help offset the $30,000, um, depending on timing and how we wanted to do it. But if you, if we did want to apply for LCHIP or other types of grants going forward, you would need this type of survey to be done in order to do that. And as far as it limiting what you can do on buildings, um, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. So we shouldn't just say, oh, we, we don't want to do that because of the fact that we want to look at it. And they have all sorts of, they have folks there that can help come and consult with you and give you different uh, pieces of information about it and look at what you want to do or don't want to do. So. Suzanne, you were born to win. I have, I've been confused over the last exchange between you and Charlie Dion. I, I thought you had said... Can't hear you. Sorry. <coughs> I thought I heard Caroline saying that the net result of all of the operating budget revenue and the war articles that they pass are going to result in uh, no increase in the tax rate from the, town, the town's portion of the tax rate. And yet, I thought I was hearing something different in the last exchange between you and Charlie Diamond. So, this is really confusing, and I'll just say this is really confusing. So, yes, if everything passed, you could expect the tax rate to be level, and part of that is because the valuation was higher, and the valuation is going to go back down. Um, so the difference in tax rate is has a value of 16 cents, and that doesn't mean that your tax rate is going to go up 16 cents because if you vote, if, if, the, if the operating budget passes, um, it's just the, the, the tax impact value, so to say, of, of the 2020 proposed operating budget over the 2019 operating budget. Um, but like I said, the default budget has value too. So I, I haven't calculated that to say how much more it would be than that. So, so you can't say that the tax rate would be 16 cents less if, if the budget doesn't pass. Um, so all I can say is, is that's the extent to which I've explored the numbers. Um, so it does sort of infer that if not everything with a tax impact passes, that the tax rate would be lower. Um, but it wouldn't be 16 cents lower if the operating budget doesn't pass because, like I said, the, the, the default budget also has value. So with regard to, for example, the town hall assessment, um, $30,000, $10,000 has a value of 3.5 cents on the tax rate estimated. So if you multiply that by 3, then theoretically that's the impact of $30,000 on the tax rate. But because we're coming you know, the tax rate at any given time is a reflection of what was approved in that year. So we, we clearly must have done a lot more with, um, with cash outlay last year to reflect that we are now otherwise going to go, um, we're, we're level. So, so you know, it, it, it sort of infers that we're putting more into 
operating budget and doing less with capital, I guess, is the takeaway from that slide. Judy Nelson, I'm um, Ora Glenn. Um, did you just do, uh, I have a few questions, but uh, just for that one, perhaps a request that each warrant separately has a tax impact for the deliberative session, so we'll be able to sort of see each one uh, separately as well as a total during for the deliberative session. Um, the school does provide that as a separate sheet, and then I think that that would be very helpful for all of us to be able to um, understand the tax impact. So that, that's just a request. Um, no need to respond at this point. Um, so the generator for the town hall, does that generator also serve the police station? I just wanted to find out this now. Yes, and that's why it's considered essential. Is because okay. for emergency situations, you need your police station to be able to okay. operate. I wasn't sure that one town hall is mentioned, but also always includes the police station. Thing. Sounds like it does. Um, I, and so I, since the uh, filing period for petition warrant articles has ended, I'm just going to assume that there are no petition warrant articles that affect the uh, town budget at this point, that would affect the town budget at this point, that have monetary value attached to them? That is correct. There are three petition articles and they have no financial impact. All right, thank you very much. And finally, I just want to um, remind everybody uh, here that the filing period for school district of officers it will be at the town hall this year, not at the SAU, and they are the same filing period, January 22nd through the uh, 31st, I believe. So um, thank you to our town clerk for um, offering to oversee that. We think it'll make it easier for residents to get there. Thank you. I was also going to make the point that this is there's still a deliberative session, SB2 deliberative session, where everybody can uh, weigh in again on, on these. This is a hearing, essentially, for the budget committee to decide whether or not to recommend that you're hearing uh, input from the town. Choices are really hard because choices require a lot of work. And 
I just wanted to take the opportunity to say we're struggling to get volunteers and keep volunteers, and it's a function of staff time that we are just um, treading water with this conversation, which is why a year later, um, from from you know proposing or not proposing what the last idea was, that here we are again, not very much further than we were last year. Questions about the Warren Articles? Okay, with that, I will call you to raise your hand. Uh, with that, we'll close this hearing, public hearing, and uh, we'll take a break for about 15 minutes, and then we'll be in the uh, Public Committee meeting to vote on each one.